Hello, I am Eric Faldi. I'm Marcus Moldashel. And we're doing a review on behalf of Fargo 3D Printing. We had a, a Skype interview with a group called Zesty Technology about a year ago. Uh, it's Likla and Brian from Australia and Cyprus. And I think in May, I, was re uh, I had a, an email from Brian saying, would you like to review our product? It's a direct drive, uh, remote direct drive print extruder. Yep. Something like that. I'm going to read the description so we get it perfect. Uh, the Nimble is a remote direct drive extruder. This means the stepper is split away from the extruder, extruder itself. This removes almost all the weight from the extruder part, making the Nimble weigh less than 27 grams. The Nimble is powered via a drive cable that transmits the power of the stepper directly to the gear system inside the Nimble. And uh, the gear the gear ratio is 30 to 1. Yeah, it makes so, sense. Um, I think we'll just jump right into it. Uh, we're going to talk about firmware yep. a bit, and Marcus <coughs> is going to start off with that. So like Eric said, first of all, we're going to start off with firmware. So there's a couple major things you need to change. Like he was saying, there's the gear reduction. So we'll need to change our steps per millimeter. Then we'll need to change the amps and the acceleration and jerk value. So this is very similar to if you've already done uh, different things in your firmware, such as changing steps per millimeter, inverting axes, or anything like that. And if you haven't, it's something very easy to Google, and there's plenty of tutorials and things like that. And if not, if you just scroll through your firmware, you should be able to find these settings fairly easy. And all the values you need to change it to are already on the Zesty Tech website. Yeah, and in my case, I'm not as familiar with firmware, so Marcus actually had to help me quite a bit. I was working on the Alunar M505, which is the Annette A8 ripoff, which is a Prusa clone. Uh, and he was working on the Orion Delta uh, CME CNC printer. And neither of those printers have uh, physical uh, potentiometers, which is the way you can change the stepper voltage. Uh, so you have to do it through firmware, which I think I could do now after working through it once. But mm -hmm. the first time, it's a little scary. So uh, it's not the end of the world. And I think uh, at first, I did not know that you had to change that because it said can and should. <laughs> or because there's you know it, you yeah. can find it on there they have some documentation about how stepper motors work and it made a lot of sense why you have to go with a lower voltage so now that we have our software done let's talk about how to install the hardware so for a lot of printers if you go to zesty tech's website they already have brackets made for you like eric has one there there's another one on here yep. it's a two-piece one that was actually made by a community member named turpinator he's been very helpful yep so again all these mounts are very simple to install none of them are super large and complex yeah i'd say this is mean, probably about a 25 30 minute print yeah. and then this one was maybe an hour because it was two pieces but yep nothing crazy so and if you're going to install it on one of these orions uh this bracket is the exact same height of the nozzle, so you don't have to change any of your offsets and things like that. Uh, otherwise, the installs for all these are very simple. You just, the only hard thing can be finding a place to put your motor, but on uh, this printer, all we did was just literally drill some holes through the wood side and bolt it on, and it works perfectly fine. So, as long as the cable reaches, you should be fine. Yeah, and if, uh, if you're having a, a printer that has a really specific size constraint, I'm not sure I want to say that exactly, but uh, you can flip it. It is ambidextrous, so it seems yeah. confusing until you actually grab it. And it's just like, oh, okay. Just you pretty much take the the drive cable out and then flip it over, and it's it's really it. Yeah. And obviously, you can't do that while it's installed. You have to do that before installation, and you would know because the bracket is going to be one way or the other in most cases. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the cable length is adjustable. Not on the fly. You'd have to buy different ones. We have the longest one that's available right now on the website. Mm -hmm. It said there was a 120. Um, this one is a 95 millimeter, um, but we probably would have been fine with the 75 or 65 millimeter. Yep. So it's, it is something you, you'd want to measure. And then if there's a printer that they have already used a lot with, they'd probably have a recommendation. So that's mm -hmm. all stuff you can change when you're doing the checkout on their website. So I've kind of covered a little bit, but Marcus and I have a bit of a different perspective on just 3D printing in general and this extruder because mm -hmm. he was working on a Delta printer and I was working on a Cartesian one. And uh, I, I was actually in the Discord. There's a Discord chat for all the users of this device. And it's really helpful. I'd never used Discord before. Otherwise, I uh, probably wouldn't have used my real name in there. So, hi. 
Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it's really cool because you can actually talk to uh, Likla or Brian in there. And the fact that they are on different sides of the planet, it means that you're getting a pretty good chance of talking to one of them anytime you log in. So if you have any problems mm -hmm. with installation or with the firmware settings, um, I went in there a little bit and had some some problems. Or they see like bad retraction and say like, oh, there was a there was a manufacturer error. We're going to send out a new cable to you. So that was something they did really well. The customer service was just top notch, A plus, uh, really quick. You can private message them if you don't want to publicly post. Because I had a couple things where I'm just like, I I should probably know this, but I don't want to embarrass myself in front of everybody. So it's it's uh, it's pretty cool. You can see what other people are doing with their Delta printers if it's a kit printer that they're putting together. So that was really interesting to see what people are doing, like liquid cooling stuff, I don't understand at all. And uh, yeah, there was actually a quote because someone was saying, I was going to go with your competitor. There is a competitor out there. You can find them pretty easily. But uh, Likla said uh, to that effect, someone, someone said, uh, are you guys just trying to do better than them? Or like, what's, what's your take on that? And Likla said mm -hmm. something that I really liked. He said, uh, we look at what and how we want to be, not who we want to beat. And that's uh, Zesty underscore Likla. And then uh, in there, you can also get ideas for upgrades and updates for firmware settings and recommended uh, slicer settings. So again, if, you, if you're looking into this sort of thing, I know it's a little bit spendy on the price, but you get the best customer service that you could imagine. So let's move on to what y'all want to know, the benefits of this extruder. So this extruder is a great replacement for any machine that is already, or already uses a Bowden tube. So something like the Creality CR10 or these Delta printers are really good examples of printers that already use uh, Bowden tubes. So with going away from a Bowden tube, you can lower your attraction and all that stringiness that comes with a Bowden tube. And if you have a Bowden tube printer, I'm sure you've wanted to join the, the cool kids and print with flexible filament and you've had a hard time doing that at any speed that isn't slower than a turtle. So with this printer, uh, I wanted to test that out and see how much better it actually is. So a uh, stock printer, stock CME CNC Orion with a Bowden tube, I was able to get decent, not good, I won't say good results at 20 millimeters a second with um, some TPU uh, flexible filament. And then switching over to the Zesty Tech, I was able to get that up to 50 millimeters a second with much better results. Prints look perfect. So it definitely will increase your printing speeds and let you print with more um, exotic filaments. So that was only TPU, nothing like a Ninja Flex, which is way more flexible than that. And on the note of filament, this has a very easy to load filament path. So if you're used to like a Monoprice V2 or something uh, of that nature where you have to kind of guess and hope that you're getting the filament into the uh, thermal barrier tube, this you can see the thermal barrier tube. You don't have to mess with any of that. It, it goes in every time and you can yeah, this see is, that. This is pretty much it. I mean, this one has a little bit of uh, PTFE between yeah. where it starts at the top and then where the, uh, mm -hmm. where the actual heat elements are. Yep. But in my case, I was using a Prusa clone. So it just goes in there. You hope that it's not going to start curling out the side of the fan or something. So yeah. that was uh, one thing that I really enjoyed. And then another thing on the Cartesian side of things, uh, I ended up losing my extruder cooling fan. So I think that caused me a few problems. So I think I, I could probably get it back on there with just some slight adjustments and maybe like make a little little cage for it. But you do end up taking off a lot of things like the heat sinks, the aluminum right. aluminum bar. Uh, it's really made a lot lighter. It didn't really add to my experience, the fact that it was lighter because I'm not trying to print, you know, however fast. Yeah. But I was finding problems with stringing. I think a lot of that is probably due to the loss of the extruder fan. And just, I, I, I got it pretty well under control. I had to change the retraction up actually. So I'm gonna think that in my case, it's maybe not gonna pay out that well, right. but Cause I, did, I did my test here. This is about an 18 or 20 hour print. It's the Screaming Sun. I've done this before. Um, so I pretty much got about what's, what a stock print would look like, which was minus a tiny bit of stringing in here. Right. Another case that I had here was, uh, this was 0.1 millimeters. I have some nice shots of this yep. uh, with uh, supports as well. So it prints pretty much how I'd expect it to on a $200 printer. Yeah, and there will also be pictures of, uh, here's like a, a flexible Eric I made so you can like bend his <laughs> legs and all that stuff yep. just to test out the flexible filament. And then also the uh, ever so popular lattice cube, which on this, there's a little bit of drooping on the overhangs, but that has nothing to do with this, this extruder. There's a very small part cooling fan on this printer, so that's 
what that's caused from. So we're gonna start wrapping up our review here. I'm gonna talk about the pros that I saw. Uh, in my opinion, the customer service is some of the best you're gonna get. I mean, the fact that they're always online is really good and they're really nice guys. They're willing to design things for printers that there aren't things for already or fix things that exist already and just need some work. Uh, documentation, install instructions are really solid. There's nice pictures and you know the name of the thing if you have any questions. So I know that it's the breach block mm -hmm. and uh, the quality and design of the build is really good. These are printed, I believe, through Shapeways, the, uh, the exterior parts. The inside is injection molded, I believe. It used mm -hmm. to be 3D printed, but not anymore. So, okay. and then yeah. uh, so, from your experience, what did yeah. you see? So me, I was really, in, I was super interested in this because it's something different. I always like to do things differently. Um, so this, you, most printers don't have a indirect to direct drive. So to me, that's that's a, big selling factor, just that it's something different that no one else has. Remote direct drive. Yeah, remote. <laughs> That's fine, I like your description. But um, another thing would be, uh, it's lightweight, so if you had just a very heavy extruder on there, like a, a bigger stepper motor, uh, so if you had problems with, say, your stepper motor skipping steps, so you upgraded to a bigger stepper motor on your extruder and now it weighs a ton, this will get an off-site remote direct drive. Uh, and with that 30 times gear reduction, you won't have to worry about the power of the stepper motor. It lightens your whole carriage and all that stuff. And then also that it's very compact. So if you want to go with dual extrusion, you can put two of these next to each other and get a very compact uh, carriage. That's where the ambidextrous uh, yep. ability comes in too. And then uh, what I saw for negative things, the firmware change for me was a problem because I've never really messed with it. Now I think I could do it, but at first it's a little scary. Uh, and then the other one is price. It depends on what it means to you. It's, uh, it's about $100 American. I think otherwise uh, it's like 90 euro, something yeah. like that. It's gonna change between now and then, but about $100, so if it's worth it to you, then, then, then it's worth it to you. There's only a few of these out on the market, and I'd say this one has the community support mm -hmm. that you'd need. Yeah, so then cons for me, again, would be that firmware, but to me, it's not that big of a deal. You can. Everything, you can find most of your uh, answers online, so I wouldn't worry too much about firmware if that's holding you back. I really wouldn't worry about it. There's plenty of tutorials online to do that. Uh, and then the other thing would be sometimes it can be loud. So with it, again, being that 30 times gear reduction, the motor's gonna have to spin 30 times faster. And such as this printer, we have it on the wooden frame, so it causes some resonance yep. with the printer. So at certain extrusion speeds, it gets really loud. but. That, again, I wouldn't really worry about that because in this case, we could put little gaskets or rubber washers between it and I'm sure that noise would be reduced. So again, not really a huge con, but it's something to be um, aware of. So my, my overall feel is uh, after using it on a Cartesian printer, if your Cartesian printer is not a Bowdoin style Cartesian printer, it might not be the best option. Uh, mm -hmm. Unless you're trying to go for a lightweight dual extrusion option. I didn't do that in my case, but I think that that would be a very good application. Um, the customer service is top notch. The creators are very open to suggestions and I wouldn't say criticism, but they'd probably take that too. A uh, very cool piece of equipment and if I can get it back off of here, I'll put it back on the Alunar, which I was working with it yeah. on before. Yeah, so I have also overall very good experience with this. Uh, personally, I would recommend this to a hobbyist or say you're, you already have a 3D printer and now you wanna make your own. This would be a good extruder to put on your printer that you build. Or uh, another popular printer would be like the TiVo Tiny Monster, the Hatchbox Alpha. Those are two good candidates to get this extruder on it. But yeah, otherwise I had really well, or really good overall time with it, so. <laughs> So this was our first like official official review. We've had other things that we've had people ask us about in the past, mm -hmm. um, but this was the first official one. Give us some criticism, we'll take yeah. it. Constructive. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of in charge of the video stuff, so it's on me. But we have a couple other ones in the pipeline, mostly build, build, uh, surfaces. build surfaces and uh, adhesion things. So stick around, those will be coming up in the future. I'm Eric Faldi. I'm Marcus Moldash. And I'll see you next time. See you guys. All right, well, I can probably live with that. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be the greatest video I've ever shot, but I think it'll be a little bit better to work with this one. Yeah. Okay, oh, actually, you can just, uh, oh, my yeah. Stuff. Yep, yep. So, it's fine. Turn this off.
Okay, so.